What's up guys? Welcome back to DCS World. Welcome back aboard the Hornet for another tutorial video. In this one we're going to take a look at a new sensor primarily used for air to ground engagements. We're going to take a look at the targeting pod. Now in early access the Hornet has available to it one form of targeting pod. Uh, it will eventually have access to two different types but for now we have available to us the lightning targeting pod. Now, if you're familiar at all with the A10C Warthog, you're already familiar with the lightning targeting pod. It is very much the exact same sort of targeting pod, and a lot of the symbology as well as the different modes that it can work in are very much the same. So let's get our targeting pod set up. We need to look down at our sensor panel here where we would normally turn on our radar and our inertial navigation system, we have a switch here labeled FLIR, F-L-I-R. This stands for Forward Looking Infrared, but it also doubles as just the main power switch for whatever targeting pod we have on. So we need to flip this from off to on. Next thing we need to do, let's go over to our right side DDI, and I'm just going to halt the camera there. We'll get to our TAC page on the DDI, and then we have an option here labeled FLIR. If we click this, we're brought to this page. Now, because I just turned the targeting pod on, it needs about a minute or so to actually warm up. And you can see it's starting to, starting to come to life now. But we see the words NOT TIMED OUT. That means the warm-up timer has not finished and we do indeed need to wait for the pod itself to warm up and fully power up and get itself sorted out. So stand by while we wait for this. This does take a couple of real minutes. All right, so we're back and the pod is now fully warmed up. The words not timed out have disappeared from the top of the screen and we now have a box and crosshairs and a little bit of symbology that we can look at. So we have up here, we have a button labeled wide. This push button can toggle the pod between wide and narrow FOVs. If you see this box here on the screen, this enables us to toggle between the wide and narrow FOV. And the narrow FOV is defined by this box. So if we switch to narrow, what you're actually seeing now is the area that was defined by that box. We can use this push button or on our HOTAS there is a button command labeled RAID slash FLIR FOV and if we tap it we can use our HOTAS commands to switch between narrow and wide. We have an indication that says it's operational OPR. We also over here have zero degrees and left. What this is an indication to us is how many degrees off bore site or off the center line, more correctly, the targeting pod is actually looking. So if I actually move it a little bit to the right, I'm now two degrees to the right. If I go back to the left, I'm now negative two degrees or just two degrees to the left indicated by minus two L. Okay. Going down the side here, we have zoom levels. We can zoom in with the pod. And I know we're just looking at water right now, but we can zoom in with the pod with these buttons, or we can alternatively use our radar elevation controls. If you remember from our radar video, the same controls we use to control the radar elevation, we can use to zoom the targeting pod in and out. And there are nine levels of zoom, both in wide mode and in narrow mode. So you can look really, really close. Let's just back out all the way and get ourselves back into wide mode. Down the side here, we also see negative five degrees. This tells us how far down or indeed how far up the targeting pod is looking. By default, the targeting pod starts five degrees down from the bore side of the aircraft. But if I slew the pod around with my TDC, I can look it up or down. And I'm looking it down now, negative 10 you get the idea. Below that we see CCD. This, this commands the 
uh, main video mode of the targeting pod. So right now it is in CCD, charge coupled device, essentially TV camera mode. If we click this guy, we can switch it into infrared mode. And there are two flavors of infrared mode that we have. We have white hot mode, indicated by this push button here and this label, WHT for white. Click that guy and we can switch it into black hot mode and back and forth. Now, if we wanted to change from FLIR to CCD, we can use our RAID slash FLIR FOV button again. We need to just press and hold it for about a second and then release. And that can flip us between the main video modes. However, uh, I do believe there is not a way via HOTAS commands to switch between white hot and black hot. You do have to use the push button on the DDI. Not a big deal. Quick note about some symbology right above that indication. We have our own ship airspeed in mock and indicated airspeed. So my own ship, even though I'm an active pause right now, I'm doing 0.92 mock. Menu button over here. Next one over is the laser spot search code. This would be used for tracking a, another laser code, which uh, I will actually detail in a later video when I highlight how to use the targeting pod to find something like a JTAX laser. We have some declutter modes available to us. If we click declutter, it actually removes some of the own ship indications. And that's really all that that does. We have UFC here, which if we click this, it allows us to change the laser spot search code that we're looking for. And RCTL, which stands for reticle, is not currently implemented. To be honest, I'm not sure what that does yet, but we will find out as the targeting pod is developed. Just as a reminder, the targeting pod on the Hornet is considered a work in progress by Eagle Dynamics and more features are going to be added to it as we go along. Now, if we want to slew it around, which I have done, we do need to, as with all of our sensors, we need to assign our TDC to it. So once again, if my TDC was not assigned, indicated by lack of diamond here, it's on my right side DDI, so I'll go sensor select switch to the right, and now I have the diamond. And with that diamond, I can now slew the targeting pod around. Let's see if I can slew it using my TDC to find some targets. And as you may have guessed from previous videos, I like to look for targets over here on the palm, on the Persian Gulf map. Let's zoom in. Oh, there's some targets right there. And let's go into narrow FOV mode and we can get a nice close up look on these vehicles right here. Switch it into black hot mode so you see what that looks like and I'll even switch it back into CCD mode so you can see what that looks like while we're looking at some targets. Now, I mentioned that if you're familiar with the targeting pod of the A10C, you're familiar with some of the different modes such as point track and area track mode. When we have the TDC assigned, it defaults to one of the point tracking modes. So right now we have PTRK up top here, means point track. So I slew this target over this vehicle here, and now I have this vehicle in a point track. However, to switch to, let's say, area track mode, I would want to do sensor select switch to the right again. Even though we already have the diamond, we use sensor select switch to the direction of our DDI with the targeting pod. We do it one more time. And now we're in area track mode. Okay. So to switch between area track and point track, you just click the sensor select switch to the right in this case multiple times until you're in the mode that you want. There is also a default mode where you're not actually tracking anything. For our purposes here, let's use a point track mode. 
Now, how do we actually use this to send target data to our weapons? Well, very simply, we lock up a target in a point track or an area in an area track, as I've demonstrated. And now we use TDC depress. And now that I've done that, that has now designated a target on the ground for any of the weapons we might have. So if I zoom out here and look up on the HUD, I actually don't have any weapons on the plane right now, so some of the symbology isn't there, but we'll look at it more in depth when we actually employ some of the weapons that can use it. I've set that target. That target is now 21.1 miles, and we have the degree offset indication as before, and that guy is somewhere in the distance over there. And I mentioned we can zoom out and do all sorts of things. Now let's say we wanted to reset our targeting pod to look straight ahead. All we would need to do is press our cage on cage button, and then that's going to snap the targeting pod back to the bore site. And this is useful for a couple of reasons. In early access right now, the targeting pod lacks any sort of HUD indication, as you can see. This is coming later. You will soon be able to see a diamond on the HUD as to where the targeting pod is actually looking. And also, if I were to flip on, say, my Jehemix, we would be able to use the Jehemix to actually aim the targeting pod. However, these features are not yet implemented and they will be coming. But just something to bear in mind about features that are presently missing. Hit my Reese switch and turn that off. Now, let's say I wanted to undesignate the target that I had just designated. Similarly to undesignating a target with a radar lock, we use the undesignate slash nose wheel steering button. And now that target has been undesignated. Now, I mentioned I snapped the targeting pod back to Boresight and why this was useful. Let me get myself out of active pause here. So now I'm flying the aircraft around. Let me just make sure it's zoomed all the way out and in wide. Okay. Now, let's say I didn't know exactly where the target was, but I know a rough area. Using my targeting pod on the bore site, I can fly my aircraft to point the targeting pod sort of where I want it and then take control of it and it will stick there. You see that? Let me do it again. I'll snap it back to Boresight, aiming my aircraft down at the targets that I want to look at, roughly sort of where my path vector is. Again, we don't have a clear indication, but you can see on the targeting pod screen roughly right about there. Use my TDC to take uh, control of it, and then I can zoom in on targets and go about my business. All right, so pretty straightforward back into active pause real quick one other feature of the targeting pod is its ability to laze and fire a laser that allows us to use laser guided weapons such as laser mavericks and laser guided bombs and we have one more switch down here that we actually need to engage the center switch on the center panel here ltd slash r this stands for laser target designator slash ranging we need to flip this up to arm and in fact you'll notice it actually snaps back to safe need to get my master arm switch on and I need to get the airplane into air to ground mode and then if I go ahead and flip it to arm it should stick in arm and I'm actually gonna get this out of flare mode so we can see the symbology if we want to actually fire the laser we have an option here labeled trig if we click this, trig becomes boxed. And now the way we actually fire our laser is just by using our gun trigger. So let me get this target here in a point track lock. I'm gonna zoom in on him just a wee bit. Oh, I'm zoomed in. I'm going narrow FOV mode. Get this guy in a nice point track. And then just a simple click of the trigger, the laser is now firing. And we know the laser is firing by the indication here, LTD slash R, laser target designator slash ranging. 
Now, as you may be familiar with targeting pods, we can change our laser code. If we wanted to change our laser code with the laser armed, we have code here, and then we would hit UFC. Back over here, laser target designator code, LTDC. Click this guy. The default is 1688, but let's say we wanted to go 1588 on the UFC. Enter. Now we are lasing that target with the laser code of 1588. And you can set that up to match your own weapons, or you can laze for other airplanes in the area who are deploying laser guided weapons, and you can give them your laser code. All right, guys, that's really all I have to say about the targeting pod at this junction. We're going to explore more about how to use it when we actually employ some of the weapons that it can be useful for. But for now, that just gives you a quick, um, a quick primer on the targeting pod and how we're going to use it later on. So I hope you guys enjoyed that and found it helpful, and I will see you for the next video. Take care.